Firstly, if we look at all the options, we can see that they are all numbers, so we will assume the limit exists. We can then calculate the value of the expression for a positive value of h as follows. Using this method of entry ensures the same value of h is substituted in. The answer calculated is 2.48, which is closest to 2.5, so the answer is C. Question 2. Using the information from the question, we can form an equation and solve for h+. Plus. This can now be evaluated on our graphics calculator. Thus, the answer is B. Alternatively, you could solve this in the Equation Solver app. Question 3. First, let's draw a graph of y equals x e to the x. Given that, the question asks us to find the area between x equals negative 1 and 1, we will use the initial view window. We can see that some of the required area is below the x-axis and some is above the x-axis. We can calculate the area of such a region using the mixed integral option on this calculator. We enter the lower bound as negative 1 and the upper bound as 1. The green shaded quadrilateral means area. So the requested area is 1.26, answer B. Alternatively, one could calculate the area without the graph using the run menu. We can use the idea of an absolute value of a function as follows. The absolute value can be found under Option and Numeric. Question 4. f of x is a translation q units of the function g of x where g of x is equal to log base p of x. The graph of g of x with p greater than 1 will look like this. Where we know that the x-intercept is equal to 1. We are given that q is between 0 and 1. So, the graph will be translated left some amount between 0 and 1. Option C looks correct, as its x-intercept is between 0 and 1. Checking the others to be sure shows that each option 
has been shifted too far to the left or too far to the right. So C is the correct option. Question five. If you do not know what the graph of the velocity function looks like, we can graph it We will start with the initial view window, but with x min equal to zero, as t must be greater than or equal to zero. If we zoom out, which can easily be done by pressing the subtraction button, we get a good view of the graph. From our graph, we can see that the velocity is always positive, so the object will always be moving away from the origin. If we look at our options, Option C is the only graph which shows a displacement time graph that moves away from the origin for t greater than or equal to zero. So the correct answer is C. Question six. First, we can draw the graph of R of t. In the question, we are told that t is between 0 and 10. So we can use this to the, set the domain of our graph. If we initially calculate how much oil is in the tank, we can set our y max as 9,000 and our y min as zero. Alternatively, you may wish to set the domain and use zoom auto to set your range. We can now integrate from zero to 10 as follows. The lower bound of zero and the upper bound of 10. Thus, the correct answer is A, 38,910 litres. Question seven. This scenario can be modelled using the binomial distribution where P is equal to 0 0.1 and N is equal to 20. We want to find the probability that the number of defective shoes, X, in a batch of 20 is equal to 2. Utilising the statistics mode, we can evaluate this probability. We are calculating the probability of a specific point occurring, so we need to use BPD. Entering the values, we get And so the answer is option B. Question eight. First, I always make a mental note of what angle I require, and then I label my side lengths. This problem can be solved using the cosine rule and the equation app. Going into the solver section, we can enter the general form of the cosine rule. Letters can be entered using the red alpha key. Here 
Here, we are using X to represent the angle capital A. Now, our capital A has been given in degrees. So we need to make sure our calculator is set up in degrees. There it is, degrees. Okay, so we can now enter in our values for A, B and C as has been done here. A is 8.8, .8, B is 11.3 and C is 9.9. .9. To ensure we get the correct answer, it's best to make x equal to zero here. The lower and upper values gives us a bound for the angle A. Given A is in a triangle, it can be no bigger than 180 and no smaller than zero. From here, you want to use the cursor to highlight which variable you want to solve for and hit solve. Thus, it can be seen that the answer is 48.5, which is option A. Question nine. Recall that the acceleration of the particle can be found by differentiating S of T twice. Thus, to determine the acceleration at t equals 3, we can evaluate Thus, the correct answer is B, 0 0.33 metres per second squared. Question 10. The first thing that comes to mind for this question is that a change in concavity occurs at a point of inflection. A point of inflection can be located at a point x where f double dash of x is equal to zero and a sign change occurs. Graphically, this will occur at the x-intercept of y equals f double dash of x. Before graphing f double dash of x, we need to check the calculator is set up in radians. So we go shift, set up. My calculator is currently set in degrees, so we need to set it to radians. We can graph f double dash of x by doing the following. To find the second derivative, we go option, calc, and f2. We will now check to make sure that our view window is in the initial setting. We now need to find the x-intercept, which can be done using the root button. Therefore, the correct answer is negative 1.89, option D.